let's talk about no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that word. Look, here in the UK, we know what it means on both sides. However, they have two very different meanings, particularly in the US. So if you're American and you're watching this, it's not what you think it is. And this is what I'm talking about. I'll call them waffle based meatballs because I'm not going to put that word in the title or say it out loud in the video because I'll probably get demonetized or worse. But this is a very popular brand here in the UK. Mr. Brains. Okay, very popular, cheap. They come in at about £1.20 for six. Or you've got the really nice ones that I got from the butchers. And essentially that is what they are, an offal based meatball. To be honest with you, I'm not too keen on these. I just think they're a bit meh, they're a bit mushy. And if I remember correctly, they are tiny, absolutely tiny. I can just about make one out in the frozen depths of gravy. You can sort of see the outside of one, which is about that sort of wide. I compare that to these, these sort of homemade butcher's ones, doesn't compare does it? So these were £3.25, the Mr Brains were like £1 something, £1.20 I think. So yes these are more expensive but they're a damn sight better and still really really cheap. Two of them for an adult, you're laughing. So I thought I'm going to cook these up today and I'm going to serve it nice and traditional, peas and mash, but we're going to make a really nice onion gravy as well. Now, to make an onion gravy, first you've got to start off with caramelised onions. You cannot shortcut them, all right? They, they need long, slow cooking. So I'm just going to slice up my onions nice and thin, get it onto a low heat, nice and low. Add a dollop of fat of your choice. I've got some beef dripping just because I had some, but just plain old veg or sunflower oil is fine. Then once you add your onions, you've got to cook them long and slow. There is no shortcut. And any recipe that tells you, Oh yeah, you could do caramelised onions in like 15, 20 minutes. Rubbish, absolute bollocks. There's no way you can shortcut it because you need that long, slow, low cooking to sort of really caramelise the onions. You could whack the heat up to speed up the process, but what you're gonna get then is burger onions, which is great for your hot dogs or burgers, but that's not what we want for our gravy. You, you want a really gentle sizzle, right? No more than this. And then after about half an hour, you can see that they're just starting to go. This is after 30 minutes, they're nowhere near ready yet they need to be cooked for a lot, lot longer. And it's gonna take about an hour and a half to two hours to get that nice, beautiful color. Now you might be thinking, Adam, that's a long time to be cooking onions. Gas is expensive at the minute. It is, but what I suggest you do is do them in bulk. Do a big batch. Take two, three kilos of onions, cook them down all at once, portion off what you need for the gravy, and then just put the rest in the freezer. Cool it down, put it in the freezer. But I did do a small little test, just to kind of get an idea of how much gas it used. So I turned my boiler off, turned my heating off, so there's nothing coming from that. I've got no other gas appliances. So when I started cooking them, this is how much gas I'd used today so far. And once I'd finished cooking them, these took about an hour and a half, I went and had another look just to see how much it had increased. And it was only a few pence. It wasn't really much at all. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not too bad. And in this video as well, I'm gonna show you how to make a nice, creamy, smooth, buttery mash. Okay, little tips and tricks. So watch out for those as well. Let's crack on with it. Before we do though, please do the usual thing. Like, share, subscribe, thank you very much. Share this to your friends and family. And it's a nice cheap easy recipe this, so share this to the people that you know that are in need. So there's the caramelized onions, and I'm gonna add a little bit of fat to that. Just to help make our roux. Don't have to use real butter, you can use like butter spread if you want. It's just gonna act as a, as a thickening agent. I'm gonna go in with about, I'd say a dessert spoon, tablespoon of butter and the same of plain flour. Again, all the ingredients will be below in the description of this video, just for those who are not aware already. I do get questions a lot, like, oh, where, where do I find the ingredients? They're always below this video, in the sort of show more description section. And back onto a low heat, and all I'm doing is making a basic roux. This will just add thickness to our gravy, because you don't want thin, insipid gravy, do you? I think I'm gonna add some sage at this point. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. Usually I'd add thyme, but I haven't got any at the minute. I used up what I had left for the last video. And I'm gonna cook this out for about a minute or so, just so the flour cooks out. If you don't, then it will be like chalky when you, when you have your gravy. Then after about a minute, I'm gonna start adding my beef stock. You can use any beef stock you like, really. For, for reference, this is the Knorr Jelly Pot rich beef stock, I think. Yeah, it is. But use whatever beef stock you like. I'm gonna go in with about half of it. That'll just start it off, but it'll all sort of clump together into a thick paste to start with, don't panic, that's absolutely fine. Then add the rest of the stock back in once all that's absorbed. I, you often hear like this talk about when making sort of roux-based sauces that the stock has to be hot, or the, if you're adding milk it has to be cold, sometimes the milk has to be warm, there's lots and lots of conflicting advice. For me personally, I've made tons of like roux-based sauces, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, as long as you don't like chuck it all in at once, 
it tends to work out just fine. See, there is no flumps of flour in that whatsoever. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. I'm not gonna add too much now because there's salt in the stock and we can always add some at the end. But what would an onion gravy be without Worcester sauce? You can use Liam Perrins or Henderson's relish or whatever you like. Go with a good few splashes of that, it's about two teaspoons I'd say. Pepper, because I love it, I love it with everything. Whack in a bay leaf and leave it on the back hob nice and gently. It'll tick over, it's just gonna get better and better and better. It looks like it's getting a bit too thick, you can always add a splash of water if you want. But essentially that's your onion gravy done. I, ne I nearly said it then, <laughs> I nearly said the word. Uh, your offal meatballs, these are already cooked, okay, by the butcher, so they only need to warm through. So at the last minute, for about five minutes, we'll pop them in. Potatoes, mashed potato then. Right, it's really, really simple. Let me get our spuds out. I mean, you can faff about and weigh them out and, and sort of get precise measurements if you want. But look, two potatoes that size is gonna be enough per person, per adult. For a child, that's gonna, one of those is gonna be fine. Cook with feeling sometimes, you don't always need to have precise measurements. If you've got a bit of extra mash left over, don't matter, does it? Stick it in the fridge, have it tomorrow. And I don't think you need to be told how to peel a spud, so that's all I'm gonna do. Got to make a bit ropey, don't they? A bit bruised. It's a problem with supermarket potatoes, the, the quality can vary widely. But you know, we work with what we've got. And once peeled, I'm just gonna cut them up. But here's a little tip for you, don't cut them up too small. If you like cut them up into tiny little cubes thinking, oh, it's gonna cook faster. Well, unfortunately what's gonna happen is your potatoes are gonna become waterlogged. And when they become waterlogged, your mash is gonna be insipid and horrible. So that sort of size is gonna be absolutely fine. Like a roast potato size. In a pot, I'm gonna add some water. First to kind of rinse them off, wash them off a bit. Drain that, drain that water off. Fill it back up. Oh, we have a squirter. And then back onto the stove. Whack the heat on. And I'm gonna add a pinch of salt as well. Bring the spuds up to a boil. And turn down to a simmer. And I'd say cook those for like 15 minutes. What can I tell you, until they're soft. If a knife or a fork can go in nice and easily, they're cooked. Spuds are pretty much there. They're only like a couple of minutes away. So what I'm gonna do is add, I need to set it again then, our awful meatballs into our gravy. Because like I said, they're already cooked. They only need to warm through. Plop them in, stir them around, get them coated in all that wonderful luscious gravy. What is not to love? Come on. I might add a little touch of water, just to thin it out a touch. Splat. Pop a lid on it. And that'll take like five minutes to warm through. Get these spuds drained off. Make sure they're fully drained as well. Okay, I should have used a colander here, shouldn't I? It's not gonna fit. What I'll do is I'll leave these to sort of steam dry for a minute or so, just so some of that moisture's come off. I'm also gonna get the peas on. It's a bit hard to do this one-handed. I have to use my knee. Oh, for God's sake. You are a moron. And listen, I've seen people overcook peas all the time. These are petit pois, but it worked the same with peas. Put them onto a boil, rapidly boil them for two minutes, turn them off, they're done. Okay, you don't need to boil them for five, 10, 15 flipping minutes. I think my dad once, he used, to, he used to put the flipping peas on the same time as the roast chicken went in. I was like, what are you doing? All they need, that's all they need. Because you still want some bite to them. Mashed potato then, got the same pot that I cooked them in because it's still got some heat in there, so it's gonna retain the heat. Now you can use a potato masher or a fork, absolutely fine. But if you want really super smooth mash, get one of these. They're pretty inexpensive. It's called a potato ricer. If you can't afford it, it absolutely it's fine. Don't worry. And all you do is spoon your potatoes into there like that. And it's actually pretty fun too, because look. Whee! Potato rice. It's not actually rice, is it? But you know what I mean. Look how fluffy that mash is already. I've not added anything else to that yet, and it's completely lump free. But of course, what does mash need? It needs butter. If you can't afford butter, you can use like butter like spread if you want, or you can leave it out, it's up to you. But I like butter, so I'm gonna add in about 200 grams. Yeah, it sounds like a lot, but I like mine really buttery. Now I'm using white pepper. You can use black pepper if you want, but for some reason, white pepper just seems to work much better with mash, in my opinion. So I'm gonna go in with about a teaspoon, because a lot of this is gonna be about tasting as we go. It needs a little bit of extra salt. You know, if it might, might need some extra pepper in there. You could add a bit of mustard if you want, some cheese. It's up to you. Now if you're making like a pie or something, like a cottage pie, shepherd's pie, whatever, and you need a mashed topping, stop here. 
But because we're serving this as a side dish, what I am gonna add is some milk. In the past, I wouldn't do that. I just leave it as is, but I find by adding a little bit of milk, it just loosens it a little bit, just loosens it up. And it just makes it a better, better mash for a side. Going with like 100 mil. Look at this, beautiful. I don't drop it on the flipping floor. Beautiful, it's gonna drop in it. Beautiful, soft, lump-free mash. Whoops. So all that's left to do now is to serve up. Easy. There we go. Really simple British classic. Uh, awful meatballs and onion gravy. Nice, really simple buttery mash to go with it. Peas, classic, it's good for you. Britain might not win awards for like beauty in terms of their food, but we more than make up for it with flavor, trust. And that is a simple, easy midweek meal. It'll feed three adults, no problem. Could probably even get away with two adults, two little kids. Because one of those meatballs will probably feed like a young kid, easy. You're not having any, it's too salty for you. You had some Hazlitt earlier, which he's, which he really scoffed down. You had fish yesterday, you had chicken as well. Spoilt. But listen, I'm gonna shoot off because this is getting cold. Well, it's actually stone cold now because I've done B-roll, taking the photos, life of a cooking YouTuber. But anyway, I'll see your beautiful faces next time. Bye for now. Oh, come on you. Look, it's no.